All right, Loop is here, and I'm gonna be honest, it is probably the best app Microsoft has created in a long time. If you trust me, you can just end this video now, go check it out. There's a link in the description with the link how to get started. If you don't trust me and you wanna learn more, how dare you? But let's talk about it. Let's talk about what Loop is and uh, what it's useful for and why you should get started with it. So what is Loop? Honestly, it's kind of challenging to nail down, but I'm gonna do my best. Loop is sort of a free form canvas that Microsoft used to call fluid documents and it's kind of evolved over the years into what Loop has now become. There's three things that make up Loop. The first is components. So think of little snippets that you can share with your coworkers and collaborate on in real time and not have to link off and go to a different tool. And you can work right within a tool like Teams or Outlook and collaborate and build something like a checklist or a to-do list or a table of, of content. Next thing is pages. So pages gets built with think components stacked with bodies of text and you can kind of build out a page almost like a Word doc. The next level sort of outside of that is workspaces. So components to pages and then workspaces, wrap all that up into a space where you can collaborate with your coworkers within the Loop app. Think about that and we're gonna dig in and actually show it and it might make it a little bit easier to understand. Okay, while I'm getting Loop pulled up here, I do wanna share, if you aren't aware, we are a 100% Microsoft 365 focused channel. And so if you've been kind of upscaling or wanting to learn more about Microsoft 365, I would encourage you to subscribe, check out our other videos, and um, be sure to hit that like button too. It really helps with uh, kind of getting it out there and sharing this video with others. Okay, so I'm on the Loop home screen here. This is a collection of workspaces that we are actually using here at work. And I'm just gonna open up this getting started one. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, there's the vertical menu that is basically your collection of pages within this workspace. So anyone that is involved in this workspace will see all of the pages down here. Let's look at this check the basics page. You can see that it's largely just a text editor, but they split it up into different sections and you can check things off and really build this out however you want. If I wanted another checklist, I could do slash checklist and I can start building another one here. So I just created this checklist. If I wanna just share this checklist with my coworkers, for example, I can go here I can click create a loop component and you'll see it kind of does this cool little gradient outline. Suddenly that feels different and it's being called out that it's a component. So now if we wanna share this with someone else, we can click copy component here and we're gonna grab that. So if I wanna share this with someone in Teams, Livy's making a cameo here. I'm gonna paste this component in and it's gonna tell me she won't be able to edit this. So we just need to manage the access quick. If I change this to anyone in my organization, can edit, apply. Now Livy can actually come in here and edit this with me as soon as I send. And this is different from a lot of Microsoft Teams chats. Most of the time it's when you send something, it's sent and you can kind of like go into the edit button and edit your message, but never has there been one thing that both of you can work on together within the chat. So if I wanna go add item four, for example, it kind of lives within that Teams chat. So think about these components kind of making their way into all of the Microsoft 365 tools. So why don't we go ahead and create a new page and see what that experience is like. I can, well, I'm gonna pause here and say, you can see that there's actually a new link button. If you have something that's outside of Loop that you wanna pull into Loop, you can just add a link to the sidebar right here. But I'm gonna click new page. And down here, you can see there's quite a few templates that can be used. And I'm gonna open up this. So just take a brief kind of scan of all these different concepts that you could be using Loop for. So think, 
like a product wiki if you need to house all of your information about a product in one place or you want to uh, keep all of your project information in one place. I'm gonna just go ahead with this project brief template. So let's say we're starting up a new um, digital download product. From here, I can take this and create goals, include team members and establish their role on the project. And there's other tools in Microsoft that do this, but this is sort of a good central hub to house a lot of this information in a casual way, something that's not too structured, that you just wanna put all the information in one place that people can access easily. I'll also note Microsoft kind of makes this app look fun, I'll call it. Like they lean into the emoji game pretty strong here where every page can have its own little emoji and banner and really just making it friendly uh, and not making it feel like some really enterprise structured, you know, tighten our ties and, and be all formal. And uh, they do a really good job of making it feel sort of fun. So after I've created this page and let's say I want to collaborate with others on it, I could go ahead and share it as a component, but I really want others to come into this tool and have all these other pages alongside it. So I can go up here to share and say, I want to share this workspace and I'm going to invite Libby again. Now, if she comes into loop, she can access this workspace and everything within it. And there's no, you know, separate permissions for all the little things. One more thing before we leave pages, I just want to quickly walk through where Loop is at now. Like I said, it's in preview, so there's not a ton here, but when you wanna build a page, there's, there's text, there's different styles of text, checklists, tables, lists, and then there's a few special ones like a task list, voting table, and progress tracker. This task list, I'm not gonna to get too far into it, but it actually creates a representation of the tasks that get created in Planner. So it can come along if you use Planner and you keep all your tasks there and you want these loop tasks to come alongside that into one tool, they can do that. We'll probably share more about that later, but for now, there's some cool templates there and then you can uh, tag people, you can obviously add emojis and um, labels can be really helpful if you wanna create call outs and then images as well. Nothing too crazy, but uh, like I said, it's just in preview. We're actually part of a, a preview group where we get to help shape some of the future of this tool. And so uh, I know about a few other things coming here that I'm excited about, but uh, would love to hear kind of your ideas of what you would like to see. I know one of the big requests is like, let me put code in here. I wanna see code formatted for some of the more technical teams. So. They can add so many things here. Uh, would love to know what you would find helpful. And while this does all look very free form and if someone comes in and deletes something, there is version history. So if you go up here and click version history, you will see that you can backtrack through what someone else has done. If you wanna work outside of a workspace, one thing that we found really helpful is this ideas tab on the left allows you to create your own pages without creating your own workspace. And if you get something to a point where you want to include it in a workspace, you can come in here and say, add to workspace and integrate it then. So it's a good place to put things that are kind of a work in progress that you don't quite wanna share with people yet. Okay, so we've kind of given you a demo of the tool itself. Let's talk about when you should use this and what it's good for. So I like to rely on Microsoft's tagline that they use for this tool. It's think, plan, and create together. And if we kind of divide that up, the first one is think. If you're like, I need to get stuff down, I need to a workspace where I can actually just put ideas down and get them somewhere where I can organize them. It's a great way to kind of think through that. Plan is if you want to bring others in on actually creating something that's maybe gonna happen or maybe a product that you're building and you want to plan some structure around that, they can do a pretty good job. Next one is create. So if you have a plan and you want to actually create something with it, think like a webinar. We just planned a webinar in loop and we wanted to take the things out of that. And so we basically created the structure of all the different snippets for the webinar and the, the promotional materials. It made it really nice. 
because there wasn't a ton of extra formatting that came along with it. It was just very simple, easy to pull out the information and create the actual event. And together is probably the most important piece. Obviously, this isn't gonna do much good if you're an organization and you're the only one that can use it. It's really aimed towards people coming into one place and co-creating on the same thing. Loop makes it really nice and easy to get everyone in the same space. So when should you try Loop? Like I said, this is probably the best tool that I think you should start getting into. And uh, honestly, they have a really active team that is building this tool and they're always looking for feedback. Like I know on Twitter is actually how we started to engage with them. It's a live thing that is really improving over time. Even though it is in preview and you will need to rely on your IT to kind of get things set up, it's worth getting into and trying out and starting to maybe move away from tools that you're used to. So if you're used to using OneNote, I think Loop is kind of the next iteration of that where on OneNote you have like on the left hand side your menu and then your content on the right side and you kind of get to structure. But it's, it's kind of been a little bit of an odd duck of a tool. If you're using OneNote, try loop out. On the opposite side of that, SharePoint team sites. So SharePoint does really great at large organizations when you need to, to communicate and, and work with large teams, but doing a team site for every little project can get really intimidating and feel very structured, kind of like you're within a box that you don't want to play in very much. Uh, I will note that loop does not replace the like document storage aspects of a team site, but if you're just looking to like set up pages and create a place where people can go and reference information, Loop is again, more casual and easier for people to access with kind of a lower barrier of entry without things feeling too formal. So one example of that is we have like our marketing team and we keep standard operating procedures. I know it sounds formal, but honestly, it has been really nice to get it into Loop where we can iterate on those things without it feeling like I have to go in and edit the page and create a version. And it, it's much more approachable to just be able to load that thing up, add a new bullet point, and it's saved and it's done. And it's very low barrier to entry. So like I said, Loop is available in private preview today, at the time of this recording at least. Uh, hopefully one day in the future you're watching this and it's already out and everyone's using it, but you can go to our blog that's linked down below in the description. That has a link to uh, the instructions for your IT to use. So just send that over to them with a little tin of brownies or something, get on their good side and get Loop going for you and your team. <laughs> I don't know. All right, that's all I have for Loop today. Like I said, we're part of actually like a, a technology adoption team that is helping shape the future of Loop, which is super exciting. If you have any ideas based on what you've seen today and want to share those down below, we'd love for you to leave a comment. Hey, if you're new to this space and all these Microsoft tools, I wanna let you know on our website, if you head to bulb.digital and click this learn button up here, we have a ton of blogs and resources all categorized by different focus areas and different tools that you can use. So if you are interested in learning about any tool in particular, we've got tons of stuff here for you to learn. It's all 100% free, as well as some events if you are ever interested in attending. We'll leave a link down below in the description. All right, lastly, if you lead an organization and you've always been kind of curious how your workplace measures up to others, we've built an assessment tool where you can spend a few minutes and you can get a tailored report across six key focus areas within your office. So if you're interested in that, head to bulb.digital scorecard to get started.